Okay, before we start this video, I have a very important question for anyone in the nursing medical field, anyone who knows anything about human anatomy and how all of these machines that are used to support the human body work. If you're only interested in the video, skip forward about 45 seconds and I'll be done by then. First of all, anyone watching this video who's in the medical field, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. You guys are doing a great job. Go our medical workers, stay at home, say lives, all of that. But I have a really interesting question for you guys that I'm sure people have already thought about, but I want to pose it just in case I am the first one to think about it by some stroke of some miracle. A dialysis machine works by taking the blood out of the human body and filtering it to get rid of all of the contaminants and all of the things that the kidneys would normally filter out like excess water and other waste products that the kidneys are responsible for excreting through the urinary system. In news patients and pneumonia patients, the lungs can become so full of debris that oxygen transmission from the alveoli into the capillaries can be disrupted because the distance between the oxygen to those blood vessels is so far that the oxygen diffusion can't happen. That decreased efficiency in oxygen transmission efficiency can lead to ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome. I had to cut that and end the case very poorly so that YouTube doesn't take this video down. What if there was a kind of machine like a dialysis machine that was able to take blood from the human body, run it through this machine to oxygenate the blood outside of the body, and then re-enter it back into the body? We've been able to replace the kidneys with a machine, albeit it's a very inefficient machine and it's a very inconvenient machine, but people that have major problems with their kidneys are still able to continue continue on with living their life. For the one to four weeks that people are battling pneumonia or the news, why couldn't we have a similar machine that would oxygenate blood outside of the body and allow them to continue battling that infection after the infection is over, they would have to be weaned off of that machine. I'm not a health science professional. I've just been very curious about that, and I wanted to get your take on this. The only thing that I can think of is that the lungs have such a huge surface area that a machine like that might have to be massive, but considering the impact that a machine like that would make, Seems like something that should be looked into from the little bit that I know. I want to just kind of throw that out to you guys and see what you guys have to tell me about that in the comment section down below. Please feel free to email me a full detailed explanation if you want to at CryptoJabbaGmail.com. I want to learn more about this. And by the way, if anyone likes that idea and wants to steal it, go right ahead. I don't care. I don't want credit. I just want that kind of thing to exist for the next time that something like this happens. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and in today's video, we have a very interesting piece of technical analysis that someone brought up in the comments section of yesterday's video. In this video, we're going to be discussing the 1,000 daily simple moving average. Not one you hear about very often, is it? As you can see, this roughly three-year moving average does have a few tests of support and resistance, and right now, it seems to be exactly where we are getting resistance around $7,300 to $7,400. In this video, we're going to be doing some analysis on this moving average and breaking down the technical landscape on Bitcoin right now so that we can have a better understanding of where our favorite cryptocurrency is going. If you guys do enjoy today's video, consider hitting that like and subscribe button. It really helps out the channel when you do that. And before we dive on into it, I do first want to mention the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy because to Today is the last day of the April 2020 sale. $40 off, you're going to be getting access to over 11 hours of high quality content, guys. If you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, then you should be locked in your house right now watching reruns of Tiger King. So instead of wasting your time with reality television show and Carol Baskins, you can instead come and learn about technical analysis so that as Bitcoin continues to move to the upside, you can continue to make money. The link for CT2A and that coupon code are in the description down below. Feel free to check us out at the link in the description down below. But without much further ado, guys, let's just go ahead and dive right on into it. Guys, there is quite a bit that I would like to talk about in today's video. Unfortunately, most of what I wanted to talk about in today's video would get my channel deleted, so we're going to be sticking with technical analysis for today. Let's do that. Over the last couple of days, we've seen Bitcoin break above $6,900, but of course, that's old news. You guys already know that. What you may not have noticed, and what I haven't had a chance to talk about just yet, is the fact that Bitcoin had a higher high, and now it looks like we've had a similar high or a slightly lower high, which means that we have definitely flagged out here, and we may actually be re-entering a downtrend. If you'll remember to what I said a few days ago, I personally believe, guys, that Bitcoin is actually going to break bullish here. What we do from this point is well and truly up in the air. We could very easily rally or we could very easily fall. I want to be very clear when I say this. I'm not predicting a massive breakout for Bitcoin. As I said in that video, guys, Bitcoin is in a little bit of a precarious spot right now, and I did predict this breaking to the upside, but I also told you guys that I wasn't entirely convinced that Bitcoin was just going to blast off to the moon like Team Rocket. It was probably going to rally, and there's a pretty big chance that we were going to actually reject around 7,100 to 7,300. It looks like we rallied up to 7,400. Sue me. Actually, don't. I don't want to get in one of those dirty, nasty courthouses right now. 
Mm -mm. Too much coffee. Too much coffee. Anyway, a lot of you guys thought I was getting really bullish on Bitcoin, and I wasn't getting really bullish on Bitcoin. I was saying I thought Bitcoin was going to break to the upside a little bit, and then we're going to have another decision point around 73 to 74, which is exactly what's happening. Right now, I'm not making a prediction on where Bitcoin is going because I think it's very difficult to tell, quite frankly, with the state that the world is in and with the state that our current Bitcoin and cryptocurrency economy is in. But that all leads me to the titular point of today's video, that being the 1,000 daily simple moving average. Giving credit where credit's due, this video idea and this technical indicator comes courtesy of Sev Nora Hurdy he says, Hey Jeb, do you have an idea on the 1000 DMA? It looks significant. And I agree with you. It most certainly does look significant. As you guys saw in the intro of today's video, we are seeing that Bitcoin bounced off of the 1000 daily simple moving average sitting back over here in November and December and even early January. Bitcoin bounced off of levels sitting right around that moving average. And right now, it seems that we just so happen to be rejecting off of it as we are testing that exact level, $7,400, as a prime level of resistance. Now, guys, in the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy, there is a video here called How to Spot a Winning Indicator in Pattern. And essentially what we're doing right now is trying to figure out whether or not the 1000 DMA is a winning indicator or pattern. In this video, for the 1400 of you guys who have gone through CT2A, you will know that the way that I define a winning indicator or pattern is twofold. One, how many people are looking and thereby trading based off of that indicator or pattern? In this case, this moving average. How many people are looking at it and trading based off of it? In other words, and more specifically, how much trading volume is being traded based off of that indicator? Because guys, at the end of the day, technical analysis is actually completely irrelevant if no one follows it. If people are reading the RSI and making trades based off of it, it's going to be relevant. If people are reading the MACD and making trades based off of it, it's going to be relevant. If people aren't paying attention to the 734 daily simple moving average it's not going to be relevant. So how many people are looking at it? So far I don't see a lot of people talking about the 1000 DSMA so it doesn't really check that box off. But there is one other thing that you need to consider and this can sometimes carry the entire weight of the pattern and that is the history of it. What's the historical precedent of the indicator or pattern that we're looking at? Well if we look at the long-term history of the 1000 daily simple moving average I would say that there actually is a, quite a bit of significance to it. Plotting only it on our screen here, let's look back in history and see what the market did surrounding this. As we can see, Bitcoin fell down to this level around $260 at one point. We bounced and fell through it. Then we got resistance at it, fell and rejected from it. Then we rallied all the way up here, rejected from it again during this 2015 accumulation phase, rallied to it, rejected again. Then when we broke through it with confidence, that's when the bull market started. We pulled back and we actually got support on that zone right Right there. From there, we also tested it as a level of support in early 2016 in the month of January. From there, during the entire history of the bull market, Bitcoin did not come down to it once. But when Bitcoin did eventually fall below $6,000, we came down, we tested it, we fell through it. In fact, if you zoom in here, we can see that Bitcoin did come down and test this and bounce briefly off of it before falling below it and then testing it as resistance and falling even farther. Then we rallied up to it and rejected right around the same zone that that moving average was in and pulled back to the downside during the accumulation phase. And then when we broke with confidence through it, through the April Fool's rally that you guys will remember about a year ago, that is when we confidently got above that level. And now what we are seeing is that Bitcoin came down and tested it in December and January of 2019. And we're now testing it as resistance. When you're looking at the historical precedent of a moving average like this, you want to look at how many times the market actually responded and respected that moving average and how many times it just completely ignored it. The reason I went through the entire history of that moving average there is because I wanted to show you that just about every time Bitcoin interacted with that moving average, it seem to have some relevance. Now, the next logical question that you have to ask yourself, is that causal or is that coincidental? Well, I would like to point your attention to the fact that there are other moving averages and other technical indicators that would have also predicted those levels of support and resistance, many of them anyway. If we look at our major weekly moving averages here, we can see that just about every single level of support and resistance that we saw the 1000 DMA have could also be attributed to another moving average. For example, this high here could be attributed to the 20 weekly EMA and this high right here could be attributed also instead to the 50 weekly SMA. Bitcoin breaking to the upside and starting a bull market here likely had nothing to do with the 1000. Instead, it had to do with many other technical factors. And these levels of support and resistance over here in December and also right now could be explained by other levels of support and resistance as well also on top of that having to do with the VPVR potentially. So am I gonna start using the 1000 daily simple moving average in my technical analysis? 
Probably not. But I think it's interesting to look at because it does carry some validity. If they are talking about it in the comment section, then there are probably a lot more people out there that are looking at it, and it is a multiple of zero. It is 1,000. It's 10 times 100 and 5 times 200. That's going into that mass psychology of big evens that we talk about later on in the academy as well. It is one of those technical indicators that people very well may be looking at and trading by. I wouldn't personally add it to my arsenal, but it is something that I will check into every once in a while, especially right now since we are testing it as a level of resistance and so far from everything I've seen, seems to be the best explanation for this exact level that we are testing and currently seeming to reject off of. You know, I think this is a really great idea for a series, guys. I want you guys to start sending me, emailing me, or commenting different technical indicators or variation of moving averages that you want me to cover that are really niche that a lot of people might not talk about. How often do you see someone talking about the thousand daily simple moving average on a technical analysis video? Not very often. So what I want you to do is continue sending me things like that and I will do a breakdown of them and tell you what I think about them so that you guys can get my take on them if you are interested in that. I think it'd be an interesting idea for a series, so feel free to let me know what you think about that in the comment section down below. It might be a weekly thing we do. Before we wrap out though, guys, there is one thing I want to talk about, and that's what we're doing during this whole crisis situation. I did a lot of thinking yesterday, a lot of introspection, and as the wise Lieutenant Jim Hopper once said, mornings are for coffee and contemplation, and he's absolutely right. I've been contemplating a lot over these last few weeks, and especially yesterday. I'm not going to get into everything I contemplated, but a lot of it had to do with myself and ways to improve myself. And while we are in this quarantine and while everybody's kind of holed up in their house and not really going anywhere, I think it's wise that we spend this time not only to work on our brains and our smarts and maybe our bodies, maybe you want to start working out, maybe your, your musical talent, if you want to start learning something like that piano back there, I promise you it's fun. I think it's also really important for us to use a lot of this time for introspection and contemplation and self-development on the mental front. It's very, very easy to slip into a depression when you have nothing to look forward to and yesterday and tomorrow and today all blend together. So I don't want that happening to you guys. Make sure you're spending a lot of time thinking about the future, thinking about what you're going to do when this is over, thinking about all the great things that you've done in the past because also something I've noticed is that I oftentimes forget a lot of my past just because I never really think about it. I kind of block a lot of it out. And that's not really a good thing because after the emotions are gone from your past, there are very, very valuable lessons to be learned from those experiences. I encourage you guys that as we continue working through this as a society, as a, as a, as a, as a species, continue thinking. I think that's the best medicine. I've told people every time I see someone who's kind of down, I say this to a lot of people when I go through Subway, I say that the best medicine is laughter and fun. So make sure you're enjoying yourself. Make sure you're thinking and make sure you're using a little bit of time to think about yourself and... Um, and meditate on what the world has to offer. Before we go, though, guys, in the spirit of self-improvement, I do want to point your attention in the direction of the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy. The reason, guys, that we sell CT2A, I'm going to go to full screen for this so we can be a little more personal here. The reason that CT2A exists is the culmination of nearly three years of working in this market. And it's not about me trying to be a billionaire, make a bunch of money, or trying to buy a new Lamborghini or anything. The reason that I created CT2A is because I want to be able to bring you guys videos every single day. And this is a business. I'm going to spend the next probably three hours trying to figure out some of these loans and stuff that the federal government is doing. I'm a business owner. We have employees and it does cost money to run this business. There is payroll and taxes and all of that. CT2A is what allows these videos to be made every single day and is what allows me to come on here every day and bring you guys this content that I hope is definitely worth your time. But what you get in return for CT2A, you get my experience and some people might say, oh Jeb, you're 19. Look, okay, I understand that. I've been in the market for three years. I've worked in them every single day. If there's someone out there that has a better product than CT2A, I encourage you guys because I care about you more than I do my bank account. Go use their product, but I don't think you're going to find that. I genuinely don't. I hear basically nothing but raving reviews from the people that have gone through the course because what we do in CT2A is we break down the process of learning technical analysis from this really mystical, like, strange thing. Like, think about the monks living in Nepal and they're sitting on top of their mountain and they're meditating. It may seem really weird like that trying to learn technical analysis. It might seem mystical or magical, and it might seem like something that's unattainable, but it's really not. There's a step-by-step -step process to learning technical analysis, and that is what I have put together here in the course. There's a reason that people love the Academy so much is because we go through everything from the very basics all the way through the far more advanced concepts, and you're going to need all of it if you're going to be an expert trader in cryptocurrencies. It's this beautiful exchange that we've set up together where I teach you guys how to go and trade these markets, and you guys allow me to continue making these videos so I can continue to bring you guys content here on YouTube. It really is a thing of beauty, and that's why I love business so much is because it's not a zero-sum game. I benefit you guys and you guys benefit me so that I can continue benefiting you guys. It's really an awesome thing. I encourage you guys before you join CT2A, look around, search about other options.
options. If you find someone that has a better course, tell me about it, and I promise you I will beat them by making ours even better, but go and use theirs until that time comes. And also, join our Discord server down below and talk to some of our previous students and see what they have to think about the Academy. Get their private testimony where I can't see the conversation. I am not a man that is going to make up testimony and Photoshop it and throw it all up on screen here and make some kind of catchy ad where I'm sitting in front of a Lambo and saying, you're going to be a millionaire if you just go through my course. That's not who I am and that's never who I will be. So I want you guys to understand that when you join the course, you're getting a good product and there is a 14-day money-back refund guarantee if for some reason you don't like it. The only thing I'll ask you is why didn't you like it? How can we improve? Here's your money back. And like I said, guys, yes, we do accept Bitcoin. God, I love that sign. <laughs> anyway, guys, I am running out of coffee and um, I have a friend of mine who just bought me a bunch of coffee for no reason. So I'm going to go get that. It's a good day. It's a good day. Anyway, guys, on that note, that is going to wrap it out for today's video. Before I go, though, guys, do consider hitting that like and subscribe button. It really helps out the channel when you do that. And I really appreciated all of your fruit suggestions yesterday. I need some travel locations for next. I need some travel locations for today's comment section because after all this is all over, I am traveling and I'm going to have some fun. We'll bring you guys along. We're going to make some great videos. It's going to be great. But before we do that, I am going to have to wrap up this video. So, guys, I do want to thank each and every single last one of you for watching, as always. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Oh, I got a real good feeling.